Good morning. I'm excited to be here. And like um, Claude said, we've been, I was supposed to be in uh, Canada, Halifax, but unfortunately I couldn't make it. But I'm excited that I get to make it here and give my talk to you all in person. So today I'll be talking about um, building an open source um, inclusive community. And I will be giving you examples um, as well, not just how you can build an inclusive open source community, but I'll also be talking about the examples and the communities that I have built in the past or I'm still building. So a bit about me, um, I live in Lagos, Nigeria. So I came all the way from Nigeria. It was a very long trip <laughs> and I almost got lost in the train. Thank goodness I didn't. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm a community lead at the Chaos Project. And that is one of my favorite open source projects. And um, that's even where I started my open source journey, and I'll be sharing that with you as well. Um, and I'm also part of the board of directors at the Chaos Project, and that happened late last year. So after four years, um, you know, contributing to the Chaos Project, I was nominated as one of the board members. So that's pretty big achievement for me as well. I'm also a program manager at the Open Source Community Africa. I'll be sharing more of that. We're a community of people that um, build open source and um, you know promote open source in Africa. And also a program manager. I do a lot of things in open source, um, so all in Africa too. And I'm also a GitHub star and have been a GitHub star for the past four years. So that's a bit of intro on me. Um, so let's talk about Africa. First, um, first there are 54 countries and with over 1.3 billion people. And I come from Nigeria, which is one of the most populated um, areas as well. Um, and also another um, key factor you should know is 70% of the population are youths. And it even plays into our ecosystem where Within tech, you see a lot of the people in the tech ecosystem are youths um, under the age of uh, 20, 23, um, you know, under the age of, we even have teenagers who get into tech like very early, but you see most, the majority of people in the tech ecosystem in Africa are youths. And also, um, you know, one stat from Forbes is that with the rise of startups in Africa, um, you know, Africa will become the next global tech hub, which is really, really interesting stats for me. So that's um, a bit of general stats. And then going into open source in Africa, like what is the state of open source in Africa? And I drew this um, stats from um, the GitHub um, Octoverse. How many of you usually see the Octoverse reports yearly? So during um, GitHub Universe, they make this Octoverse um, report where they draw stats of different commits coming from different parts of like the world. And for this particular start, you can see that um, Nigeria, like so this is the the start for the growing developer communities in Africa. And you can see that GitHub has identified that um, Nigerian developers, there's like a 45% year, year over growth in um, you know, the, the developers coming from Nigeria. And you can see like other countries and how they stack up. So you can see how fast and how impressive like the, the, the developer community is growing in Africa. And also, even with the open source project, it's not a bit clear, apologize for that. But um, you can see um, from the start, it shows that Nigeria has like um, the highest percentage of growth of open source projects um, around the world. and. This is really interesting start to help you understand the ecosystem and how the community in Africa is growing. I also want to show faces and how many of you see some familiar faces here? Okay, great. Some people. Okay, great. So um, these are faces of people that have been pushing the open source movement in Africa. They are people that have also been able to travel around the world and see what the global north is doing. And they come back to implement um, what they see in their own region. And uh, like um, Samson is there, is the founder of Open Source Community Africa, Mesraya May. I think she was in Halifax um, last year as well. She does a lot of work in um, Python communities and with Python Ghana. Um, you know, Ada as well. Um, and then there are some other people, um, Uhewe, the 
the second to the left, um, he's um, the Python organizer in Namibia. Um, there are a lot of people. So these are the people that have been pushing open source movement that started talking about open source as far back as six, seven years ago. So and and my growth process, I really do owe it. These people have also inspired me to become better, to um, learn a lot from what they have learned and they come back to implement. So thank you to these awesome people that um, you know started talking about open source and moving, building communities for um, the African ecosystem. So let's, let me give you like um, how I got into open source or how I got to this point where I am. First, um, it's interesting to know that I studied microbiology in school um, and I graduated in 2019. So I was supposed to be a microbiologist. Um, but I think interest brought me into the world of open source. I had friends, you know, from the previous slide that were in school that, you know, they were into open source um, technology. And I think I, I asked a very curious question, like, I saw my friend, you know, speaking to some people over a Google Meet call. I was like, I was curious, like, what, what are you doing? And then she explained it to me as volunteering, but in tech. And, you know, at that point when I was in school, I did a lot of like social volunteering. I was like, oh, this really sounds cool. Let me see what I can do when I'm done with like school. And then when I finished school, I started looking out for how I could improve, um, you know, analyze microbiological data. And I said, okay, um, let me do some research. And then I did some research and, you know, found Python, right? And I started learning Python. That was the first, the first journey for me. So after learning Python, um, the open source community Africa was organized, that was back in 2020 during the pandemic year. And it, I, I think for a lot of, it was a, quite a sad year, um, but also we're all stuck at home. So I had some time to really learn and pick up some new skills. So during that period, Open Source Community Africa was you know, organizing a program for women um, in open source. Um, and that's also another start that the, the, the women from Africa in open source is still you know, really, really low and still coming up. So they organized the program in 2020 to get um, more women in the community to contribute to open source. And that was in collaboration with another awesome community, Shikode Africa. And um, I signed up for that program. And I started looking for open source communities to contribute to, and that's how I found the Genome Project. And when I found the Genome Project, a particular project I contributed to was um, a project that were trying, they were trying to build um, a scalable onboarding system. And Sri was one of um, those people that was trying to build up that project. And making my first commit was a struggle um, with Git, but I still eventually did make that commit. So my first project was the, um, was the Genome project. And then from there, I found the Chaos project. So um, Siri introduced me to another project that you know, I could you know, be part of. And at that time, um, they had started the DEI badging. I think um, um, uh, Community Over Code applied for a badge here. Yeah, that was the period they had started like that project, 2020. And then I started contributing actively um, to the Chaos Project. And in that same year, interestingly, um, you know, just within seven months, um, the GitHub Star program started. And I was nominated as a GitHub Star. And I, I think one of the interesting things was um, I, felt, I felt a lot like an imposter because I was just coming into this this ecosystem, like I was just fresh new, like um, in Nigeria, there's this phrase we, we say, Johnny just come, it's like, you just arrived here, like I just came in, like how do you get this big recognition within people that are with 10 years more experience than you are? And I think I asked the question to the, the senior program manager, and then she told me that, that what was very interesting about my profile was like, the short amount of time that I was able to build communities, the passion that I had. So um, I was nominated as a GitHub star in the first year. And you know, over time, over the years, I have also built programs that have helped educate people about open source, which is the All in Africa program, um, where we're trying to educate more people about open source and uh, sponsored by GitHub. I have some a slide about that shortly. 
And currently, aside from, you know, doing program management, I'm also doing research with the Digital Infrastructure Insight Fund, trying to see how um, open source communities in Africa are thriving. So that's also another interesting part in my journey, which um, is it's really, really impressive. Okay, so um, let's um, go into actual communities. Let me share statistics let me share people let me share what i have done and what people are doing in these african communities uh, i'll start with chaos because that's like i said my favorite project um so the chaos africa community started in june 2022 so i started contributing to chaos in 2020 and when i started contributing we just had one african that was doing outreach in the whole project right um and I think I was with my peers, so we we're about three of us that were trying to get into open source. And we saw, okay, this project needs more people. And then um, part of what I was doing um, was trying to get more people involved. Um, come contribute to this awesome project. Okay, this is what open source is about. This is a project that you can contribute to. And over the period of two years, we saw an increase in contributors from Africa. And um, I'm also part of, there's a, a DI audit team that um, was sponsored by the Ford Foundation to Chaos. And we had an audit team to see how we can improve our DI processes in the Chaos project. And that team made the decision to start a chapter for Chaos, like in Africa. And so the Chaos Africa chapter started in June of 2022. And over the period of, um, you know, I think that's about two years now, um, we have built a community of over 500 members. And we also started with smaller focus groups. Um, if you know the Chaos Project, we have a lot of working groups. So what we did with this community, what I did and what I started with is, because a lot of, um, like I said earlier, you get a lot of young people in tech and even in open source. So a lot of people contributing to open source from Africa within like one to five years experience, except for those, you know, pioneers that I should initially, right? So like I saw that, okay, these people are just getting into tech. So let's create smaller focus groups where they can identify where they can contribute to. So that's how we created these five focus groups to help people contribute in smaller um, numbers. And we also, you know, use Twitter to run Twitter spaces and we have a pretty good following. Um, and also, we've also been able to do international collaborations with um, GitHub, um, you know, launching the All in Africa project, um, you know, DI project badging as well. Um, and um, a couple of um, like a co pilot as well. We have like a project um, coming up to kind of analyze how um, co pilots is Im impactful in the lives of Africans. And I also, this work is not just from me alone. I also want to show the people that are behind the scenes. And these people started off as new contributors when the, um, most of them started off as new contributors when the project, the chapter started. And they are leading things, they are maintainers, they are people that are building projects, they are people that are impactful to the chaos community itself. So these are the people that are also going up the um, leader um, leadership um, ladder and you know taking um, strides in the chaos project. Um, a couple of the initiatives and projects that we, um, the chapter itself has been involved with is the DEI project badging, which is like a, a uh, is an extension of the event badging. So what we do is we are trying to like um, you know badge open source projects and uh, we we do that through like a DEI.md file where you get to um, you know check out how your project is inclusive and improve on the projects. I can share that later. Maybe you can, if you're interested in that, you can let me know as well. Um, also, we have also built up the chaos design team, right? Um, design is something that's really important in open source. So the contributors from the chaos Africa community are building up like a design um, ecosystem, the design style guides, you know, things that, you know, bring the project into, make the project more visible and more, um, interesting so we also built up a project that showcases um african projects um Afri african open source projects called the afos project um 
that's also like where people that are building open source projects in Africa can showcase their projects. And another thing we do is sponsoring um, open source smaller events like Python events, um, smaller community events, um, you know, through, um, you know, sponsor their swags or even like food or even little things. So we're able to help those communities keep promoting. We've been able to do that in Angola, Namibia, Togo, um, uh, and Zanzibar as well. So we've been able to sponsor some smaller um, open source events. And also, we're also doing um, dis disability inclusion outreach. We um, have some um, people living with disability within the community. So um, just next week, we're organizing like an outreach um, in Lagos to help people that are living with disability and interested in open source to be able to contribute. So that's also one of the interesting thing that we've been able to build. Um, so I also want to talk about the challenges because a lot of this work, it, it comes with really interesting challenges that um, sometimes it can be a surprise to people, um, which is one is the infrastructure challenges. Like even currently, um, my country is on a strike because like, the labor union and the government, they don't want to agree on a minimum wage. So everywhere is on like a shutdown and which is things that like, it prevents productivity, it prevents people from getting access to things. So you can see issues with bandwidth connectivity. Even some people getting into tech can really prove very difficult because then you have you need a laptop. And then for some people, they are not able, some people start off with coding on their phones, which can be a very uh, frustrating thing to do. Um, also mentorship, um, something that I've realized over the years is that when people start off, um, sometimes they get lost. Um, I think there was a very interesting talk um, I listened to yesterday about um, how ASF does mentorship, which is really, really interesting. But like mentorship is also a thing that people struggle with. Like we struggle to get mentors because a lot of the people that are starting off in the ecosystem are starting off new. So a lot of times it's really hard to get mentorship um, even within the ecosystem and even sometimes when people join other projects. Um, onboarding is also another big challenge. And in the chaos project what we do is we do like this newcomer calls um, office hours where people can um, get to know about the project because um, when you get into the project there are different like moving parts so you can't really know um, where you can place your efforts so onboarding is one challenge that we always have to think about and then I think this is the, <laughs> the most um, frustrating of them all for me which is like the visa challenge and I I did add a screenshot of um, when I got the visa to come here, it was, I was so happy. And this is after seven different rejections. Like it's, it's really, really, really frustrating. Like I had to go through seven different rejections, applying to different countries and getting rejected because, you know, they feel you won't come back after you finish your, um, and the process can be very, very daunting. So a lot of people that want to participate in conferences like this, that want to even come out um, of their local region and showcase what people, um, what they are doing, what they are building, it gets really very difficult for them to even assess um, these spaces. So that's also like a, a very big challenge. So yeah, like some of the sponsors that have been part of like the chaos community are GitHub and GitLab as well. I just wanted to highlight that as well. Um, so yeah, extra two coming. I want to like show also like some um, stats from like two other communities, which is the Oscar Open Source Community Africa. We have a community of over 3,000 people that are interested in open source, contributing to open source. And we have 32 local chapters in eight different African countries. And we still keep building these smaller chapters so that this, um, the chapter leads will be able to like spread um, the word of open source throughout the remote regions in Africa. We also host uh, an annual um, open source festival um, We've done about three of them since 2020 um, with over like 2,000 people in attendance. We couldn't host those, um, the festival this year because of like um, some logistics challenge and funding. So we are able to, we're able to do it next year. And um, I think, I hope um, some people will be able to participate uh, and come to Nigeria as well. So um, fingers crossed on that. 
And also, um, lastly, the, um, you know, building the All in Africa community. So All in Africa is a program sponsored by GitHub. And what we do is we train people in open source and using collaborative tools like GitHub. So um, we have like over six, um, five, six regions. The last six region is like a francophone region, the French speaking people. Um, so we have leading ambassadors, people that are leading um, you know, the community in those different areas. And so far in one year, we've trained over 500 people in 40 different countries in Africa. So this is also on the highlight community that um, I am involved with and have been building. So um, how can you get started? Um, you know, or how from the things that I have said or from the examples that I have given, how can you um, start this inclusion journey? How can you, um, you know, be more inclusive in your community, be more inclusive in spaces? Okay. So I, I think first, the first thing I want to highlight is allyship. And I highlighted these three people here because they have been really impactful people in my career or they have been people that have given me opportunities that have um you know paved ways and have made things very easy for me in this community i've been able to do a lot of this work because of the efforts of matt um, from the chaos project and elizabeth as well and john meluso um, from the university of vermont and matt has given me a lot of opportunities in open source and he keeps looking for grants he keeps looking for ways to support the work that i do to support the the projects that i do elizabeth connected me with rich um that um you know was able to invite me here to even participate in the, um, the community over code conference and john is um the the fellow i'm doing the research from digital infrastructure insights fund with and he was able to um help write up the proposal and help submit that proposal and in collaboration with our efforts at Open Source Community Africa. And allyship is really so important because like when these challenges arise, when these different unique challenges from these um, remote regions arise, um, people can step in and try to make things better. So that's one of the ways you can um, improve inclusion within your communities. Um, another thing is using um, community audits and surveys. Um, I do have like um, a particular, like uh, like an infographic, uh, maybe I can share that later on the chaos project on the one we did where we were able to survey the community and through that survey, um, the survey is open source, so I can share like that um, infographic later. Through that survey, we're able to figure out how to make our community more inclusive. Um, diversity access sponsorships, it's also like important to help get people to um, the, the conferences, to help get people to, um, you know, different spaces. Because originally, like, some people are not able to afford some tickets or even afford, like, getting themselves there. So diversity access sponsorship, participating in mentorship programs like Google Summer of Code, Outreachy, and even creating one within um, your community can also be impactful. And local community collaborations as well, collaborating with other communities that are doing awesome work, it's really, really very impactful um, and can help you be more inclusive um, in your open source journey. So I wanted to end off with this quote, and I really, really love it, and it kind of aligns with the name of the conference. I saw it in a book by Nadia. Um, it was like a picture. I think somebody had it on their shirt. It says, I, I came for the code, but stayed for the community. And that is the that is the thing I love about open source, the community, how how receiving people are, how people want to go the extra mile for you. It's not just about the code. It's not just about the software, but like the, the, the community of people that keep, um, you know, trying to make things work, that keep trying to be more accommodating to your needs and just having a smiling face as well. But um, yeah, thank you so much for listening to my talk. I have really enjoyed my time here. You can get in touch with me via Twitter or um, LinkedIn or even email. Um, I'm also available till tomorrow morning. If you want to chat about anything regards to the things that I've talked about, please do reach out to me and thank you so much.